The reason I'm making this today is so that you at home, going into this season, as soon as the sun starts to come out and play, boy do I need that right now, can make the best decisions uh, for the sort of stuff you're going to be doing in the outdoors. Okay, so just before I start pulling things out of bags, setting things up and taking you through hopefully a really good range of different types of tarp uh, and, and tent so that you can have a definitive guide at home to making wise choices when you're going to go out and buy stuff this year, I really have to make uh, the uh, obvious declaration that look guys, I'm not sponsored by anyone to wear anything other than stuff that I like the look of or that I've used myself or that I rate uh, personally okay so I don't get paid by anyone to do this stuff this is just me um, helping you at home hopefully to yeah make those decisions okay so here we are this is where we're going to be uh, doing a little bit today well going to be kind of dotted all over the place this is very much the oldest part of the woodland and you can see some of the oaks and ashes and trees here are pretty substantial. I bought a selection of equipment down today to go through with you. We've got various different types of setup. So I'm going to get on with setting some of those up then I'm going to talk through each one. We're going to go through everything from price to how well does it pack down and carry through to uh, any experiences I've had with similar items or the same sort of thing in the past. Right the way through to uh, obviously pros and cons. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, first items come out the bag is going to be it's going to be a tent. It's going to be a tent. All right, uh, what do we got here? This is the little um, one person or one man expedition tent. You can see it's quite a slim profile. It really doesn't weigh an awful lot at all. Uh, it's made by OEX Bush Pro Salamander. I think I've just picked this one up at Go Outdoors. Sort of small coffin style tent. Probably not personally. Uh, I'm not, not a massive fan of these, um, but then the kind of stuff I do lends itself more towards um, tarping. But equally, I wouldn't turn my nose up at one of these, which is probably why I've gone out and bought one. <laughs> right, let's get on with setting it up and see how that goes. Wow, that is tiny. Okay, so it's come with some little aluminium pegs and maybe a tiny section of Sort of rigid frame that I'm going to have to obviously put together. I'm going to guess it's a hoop that goes through here. Let's have a look. Okay, so what we've got here is a pre-attached, ready-made, hooped, hoop shape. And I say hooped because it's got a, a natural bend in it. And then it is, in fact has two little rigid poles that sit right in the rear that I'm just gonna stake out. And I think that really is all there is to it. Okay, so let's take a little peek around this thing. It is basically a tent, coffin style tent. Once you're inside this thing, there's not an awful lot of room to do anything else. Very minimalist, very low profile to the ground. This would be greatly improved if I was using it in a woodland by putting something on here, just lifting that. Yeah, look at that, smiles better like that. Okay, another thing we probably need to consider uh, when using something like this is the fact that if you're lying inside here and this is touching you, okay, and this starts raining, and I mean raining hard, um, you're gonna have to work hard to keep, keep the tension in this thing to actually keep the cold from coming through. So obviously we lose heat, conduction, convection, radiation, evaporation. There's loads of ways of losing heat, right? So if you're touching the outer walls of your shelter, that's not an ideal situation. So think about that. Right, let me just see, see if I can climb into this thing. Okay. Yeah, to say this is snug would be an understatement inside here. Um, this is already bringing back memories of Afghanistan, Sangin Helmand province in a place called PB Tangiers, living uh, basically at the mercy of our USMC brothers and not having uh, quite enough equipment to uh, sustain ourselves for the, the two week duration we ended up staying in this tiny little patrol base. As usual, it was billed as a, oh lads, you'll be okay, it's a two day job. Got out there, we were there for two weeks, running out of water, surrounded on all sides. It really was a little bit of a rock's drift situation. And we were sleeping in these, just like this, these kind of 
coffin style, I suppose you can call them tents with like a mesh over the top and all that happened is the fly sheet was removed from the top. Very thankfully our USMC brothers donated those to us. I think they just felt sorry for us because we were just literally napping on the, on the uh, desert floor uh, and blokes were quite literally fighting camel spiders off of themselves. True story, one of the guys used the butt of his SA80 to squash a camel spider that came down from the wall and came over his face. I'm sure he will remember that uh, for many a year. So back to the tent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, very snug. If you're claustrophobic, probably not ideal. If you're going to be doing some uh, one person hiking or, or heading off up into uh, various bits of landscape, obviously you know, there's a lot of versatility to something like this, simply for the fact that it packs down so small uh, and also the fact that it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy, easy to carry, easy to deploy. You just saw there from the video, it didn't take me very long at all. Uh, now let's talk about price. So this particular model came in at, I think it was RRP 200 quid. Uh, I went to go outdoors and I managed to get it for £99, um, which was, which is, yeah, I'm happy with that, 100 quid off. It's something I'll probably definitely use in the future for the business a lot more, uh, not just for making this video. Right, that's the first one out of the way. As far as tents go, that actually wasn't that bad. It's a pretty high-end quality product. You can see it's got waterproof zips and seams. A lot of thought has gone into it, but purely for its shape, and that whole coffin thing, uh, and obviously reminding me of, uh, of past days, personally. I'm probably not going to use it as my number one go-to, but that's not to say I wouldn't use it because it lends itself to quite a wide variety of situations, simply for the fact that it packs down so small. Yes, I managed to get it back into the bag, just, and, uh, and it's easy to carry. Um, obviously price point. So if you are going to be going camping with your family, and don't want to be sharing with the kids, uh, then maybe, yeah, you could have this off to one side. But again, if you're anything like myself and Louise and little Finn, like you're not, you're not money bags. So, uh, so you've got to think about things like that and make things go a bit further, obviously family. It probably has great use up in the Lake District uh, for solo ex expeditions, uh, micro adventures, all that kind of good stuff. So definitely don't discount it. Ultimately the choice is yours at home. Let's look at option number two, the festival tent. Everyone loves these. Okay, this is a Euro hike pop-up tent. Um, in terms of it being quite a large round disc, I'm not sure how exactly that would kind of fit onto one of your bags, whether it be a day sack or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, it's known as a festival tent. So it's something you'd probably carry to a festival, probably ideal for camping in the back garden. Let's just pop it up. Okay, so this is gonna be a very low cost option coming in at around 30 pounds. And if you've ever seen one of these before, ever so, ever so easy to deploy. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up like that, put this off to one side and inside, they've given me a little pack of, yeah, they're gonna be aluminium uh, pegs. Now it'll have some sort of strap on it. Oh, look at this. And then pretty much outside of that, I should just be able to throw this thing up. Whoosh. And it's gonna deploy. It really is that easy. Uh, if you've never seen one of these, Okay, there's lots of different types. This is a side opening one here. <laughs> smells like new swimming pool, that kind of plastic smell coming from inside. And you can kind of see there, Let me look at that. That's easily, this is supposed to be a two person tent guys. It's easily a one man tent I'd say, or a two teenage tent. Yes, it's cheap and cheerful. Um, does actually serve a purpose and you can use these to great effect and make them go for many years. Uh, I've found by actually deploying a small tarpaulin over the top. Okay, so here we go. I've deployed the brightly coloured guide ropes all the way around the outside. And now you can see it really kind of holding its shape quite nicely. The big worry with things like this, obviously with not having kind of a, any sort of serious pitch to them, is how much water can they handle? Now the answer to that, the manufacturers put some information down here, HH. 2000 now this hh rating you'll see these all over the place it also claims to be fire retardant i wouldn't want to test that personally and i have no idea what arc flex is but it's probably some sort of proprietary design because it says tm next to it that they're incorporating here 2000 millimeters of rain put on the hourly rate there we go so that is it in a nutshell this would be quite a good model for family camping for an individual price point obviously very low at 30 pounds and something i would still probably consider today Again, with the tarp over the top, 
you're going to get so much life out of it. Obviously having walls on the sides being a tent means it's going to cut out wind uh, as well which is quite important. Something you don't always get with a tarpaulin unless you're practicing the dark art of tarpology. Uh, check out our video I did on tarpology already and there'll be some more coming. Um, tarps are very versatile um, however they're not you know the all-encompassing protection you get with the tent. So this was the pop-up festival tent let's move on to our next option. So I'm heading up to main camp to show you the next one which is already in place and has been there for about a year now uh, and it's going to be the DD Hammocks 3 by 4.5 meter XL tarp. Now this is one I've already done a whole video on on tarpology check that out after this video. Um, very very versatile enormous amount of space you can cover with that easily hide a whole family under it let's go take a look this is four and a half meters long of tarpaulin by three meters that folds down incredibly small <laughs> considering its size because it is obviously synthetic and a tech fiber now this one's been up for almost over a year and it's currently keeping the timber dry for building our off-grid cabin as we put the final touches on that. You can see I've used a ridge line underneath here uh, and a couple of the knots that we covered in previous videos. Now this thing's been up for over a year so let's take a look at the UV damage and the moss build up on here and any kind of algae and stuff. There's a little bit of that going on. You'll notice guys it's not incredibly taut okay it's not Instagram perfect. Now the reason for that is you will never, you will never beat mother nature. So the reason that this is not incredibly taut and Instagram perfect is because it needs to have some give to it. If it's got some give to it the wind can thunder past it and it can move okay and it's got some give. If you try to tie it down even with the tightest knots what will happen is you'll lose this race every single time. Let's have a look here. DD hammocks as you can see top. What tends to happen is even the, even the tightest stitching in the world will give and you end up with a rip here, a tear, or, or this um, to toggle here will come out or obviously your paracord itself will give up. But in that, allowing itself to move with the wind, because it's obviously it's not looking after personnel, it's looking after me and my family. What it's actually doing is it's looking after materials. So it's just keeping the worst of the weather off this lovely uh, Russian pine that we're using for the cabin. So there we go. This is the four and a half by three meter tarp. Just look at the amount of space underneath here it is massive okay so it's incredibly versatile guys you can turn this into a tent this is me teaching a client uh, how to turn his his one of these into a tent there's a number of ways to fold this thing we're talking origami the dark art of tarpology okay so you can fold this into a number of different configurations to to make life easier for yourself in different scenarios I think they're coming at around 40 quid. If you go up to the next size up, which is sort of a five by five from memory, it jumps to like 90 quid. So actually in terms of the trade-off for the amount of tarpaulin you're getting in coverage versus the price you're paying, this thing is an absolute winner. So our next item is gonna be your classic British military poncho basher. This is something that is a standard issue item to all members of British military armed forces. Um, obviously as a Royal Marine Commando, I was issued with one of these. In fact, I was issued with a few as time went on. So uh, they did one in classic DPM pattern you see here. Um, they did the old school desert one, uh, which I don't think you can get hold of anymore other than maybe places like eBay. Uh, and then they, they started to create these in obviously the newer uh, MTP pattern. These are incredibly versatile, incredibly durable. We'll put up with an awful lot and have personally saved my bacon more times than I care to remember. You are going to need to make this work, okay, probably a bit of cordage or bungee, elasticated bungee with some hooks on either end and then I've just pinched some pegs out of somewhere else. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy it in a bit more of a sort of a stealth camping uh, the sort of thing we do in the military, I'm going to use this kind of little bowl shape in here uh, and set it up a bit more uh, tactically lower than you would normally have it. You can, you can still see the size uh, and what it does. Uh, and we'll talk about some of its other uses. Okay guys, so here it is. Set up uh, typically uh, tactically low, which is why it's probably uh, highly favoured by uh, the stealth camping crowd. 
poncho deployed in this sort of manner or basher or whatever you want to call this uh, different uh, UK military regiments and um, battalions and, and, and cap badges would all would all probably call this either a poncho or a basher uh, as a Royal Marine I'd know this as a poncho it's got all these amazing uh, hand holds and fixing points okay because it does actually double up as a stretcher so this this will hold the weight of a fully grown man with ammunition scales body armor who's just been hit um, so it can it can easily be used for extracting uh, casualties from any sort of scenario really um, in the outdoors so it's actually very very useful just for that purpose alone so i'm going to go ahead and pack this down now you can pick these up for about 25 pounds which again from a price point very very good Obviously, it depends on whether you like the fact that it's camouflage or not. And as I showed you, there's lots of different flavors and colors they come in. So you can uh, you can pick and choose what, what your favorites might be. Looking at the size of it, okay, two meters 20 by two meters 50. Okay, I'm gonna go break it down now. I think it's good, I really rate it. Um, other than the fact it's camouflage. But the kids might love it. So think about your family camping. This could be a real viable option. Oh man, the sun's come out. Boy, do I need that right now. That is glorious. It's just been freezing down here today. Right, let's get on with uh, our next option. And so literally in the five minute window between changing batteries in the GoPro, the sun has disappeared and we're back to the freezing cold north wind. Welcome to Great Britain. For those of you who aren't living here and are abroad or are brothers and sisters across the pond in Canada, America and further afield, this is Britain. So back to the job in hand, let's check out what's in the bag. Okay, so there's a, we've covered a couple of different types of tarp. This one's quite different from the rest in the fact that it is, if I can get the wind to, to help me here, display this thing, it is by its configuration, it is a diamond. Okay, now diamond tarps um, are pretty useful for a variety of different reasons. I tend to use diamond tarp as I favour them for hammock camping. There's so many different options at your disposal, and I guess a lot of it just comes down to your skill set and ultimately the equipment that you've got to hand. This particular one is made by a company called Ticket to the Moon. So you can see now this classic triangular pattern. So what I like about this thing is the fact that I can deploy it in a number of different ways. Uh, obviously it's extremely useful and I would say its primary use is with a hammock but the simple fact that if I had this side pegged down okay so I've got this enclosed shape here I've got amazing field of vision out of each corner which if I just had uh, a squared off or a rectangular um, configuration up I wouldn't be able to see out um, of these diagonals here all I would be able to see is that tunnel at the end or the tunnel behind me so for me being a nature lover big fan of the outdoors I like to wake up in the morning in my tarpaulin and be able to see the deer or whatever's happening uh, around me in the woodland um, check out our video on wild camping where I use this exact tarpaulin and a hammock setup um, I've used this a number of times I think this is the second diamond tarp I've bought from these guys for this reason yeah it's pretty good overall obviously it's a synthetic tech fiber it's got a couple of hook on points underneath here that i can hook on things like water bottles my head torch bits and pieces when i'm down here in the evening i've got it in an open configuration at the moment so one giant slope but i could easily close that down and generally in bad weather i'll have this quite low to the ground if possible um, i've actually pegged this in the corner as low as it will go and not use the guide rope it comes with brightly colored guide rope okay they're bright yellow and they're good quality um i quite like these big fan obviously it packs down very small as well now are you going to be able to use this to shelter your entire family uh, against big winds and you know if a storm was coming in probably not that effectively no because of how open it can be due to its its shape so pros and cons guys price wise i think these come in at about 45 quid and you can see it's that rip stop kind of pattern and that works really well so if you do get a snag it doesn't turn into a massive gaping hole very quickly it tends to stay in that localized area another pro for something like this
So hopefully in today's video, I've answered some of the questions, if not all of the questions that you might have regarding what kit and equipment should I buy in terms of shelters, tents or tarpaulins, or the types they're in that I should be going for, for myself and my family, uh, heading into summer 2021, all praying for the lockdown to be lifted, certainly here in the UK, so we can get out and get back into the outdoors. If you have any comments, please leave them below. I'm always, always open to listening to anything you guys have experienced yourselves or have an opinion on or something we can discuss. That'd be absolutely amazing. 